Greetings from the US. My name is Paul Merrick. Uh, the uh, topic of today's uh, lecture is Humans are not yeast and rarely have ever become anaerobic. Lactate is good for you and not bad. I don't have any disclosures as nobody wants to pay me for anything I have to say. So we're going to talk about the myths today. Lactate causes an acidosis. Increased lactate is due to anaerobic metabolism and decreased oxygen delivery. Anaerobic production of lactate occurs during exercise. A defining feature of shock is anaerobic metabolism. Lactated ringer solution or LR causes a lactic acidosis and the earth is round. Clearly the uh, last one is preposterous, particularly for Australians, as you would fall off the bottom of the earth. So yeast ferment uh, sugar to form ethanol. Uh, this is the formula, glucose, you add yeast, uh, results in pyruvate and two ethanol molecules. Clearly humans uh, cannot ferment sugar to form alcohol, rather they consume alcohol. Uh, the interest in lactate uh, is probably in clinical medicine is largely attributed to uh, Mary, uh, Harry, Max Harry Weil, who showed this relationship between um, lactate concentration and probability of survival. So as your uh, arterial or venous lactate increased, your probability of survival decreased. And this was always assumed to be due to anaerobic metabolism and anaerobic production of lactate. This myth is perpetuated and continues to be perpetuated by the surviving sepsis campaign, who we can see state here, we suggest targeting resuscitation to normalize lactate in patients with an elevated lactate level as a marker of a tissue hypoperfusion. As we'll see, this concept, while uh, somewhat logical, is completely ill-founded. So we need to review the biochemistry of uh, lactate. As we know, glucose is converted to pyruvate by the glycolytic pathway. Pyruvate then can follow two paths. Uh, pyruvate can then enter the citric acid cycle, uh, producing reducing equivalents, which then get shunted through the electron transport chain. Pyruvate dehydrogenase is an essential enzyme which converts pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. If pyruvate cannot enter the citric acid cycle or is produced more rapidly, then it can be utilized or pyruvate dehydrogenase is ineffective. The pyruvate then gets diverted to lactate by lactate dehydrogenase. So this is the equation from pyruvate to lactate by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. And one can see from this reaction that this reaction consumes a hydrogen ion rather than producing a hydrogen ion. So the concept that the general production of lactate from pyruvate um, generates protons uh, was first uh, postulated by a biochemist uh, from South Africa, Dr. Gievers. In this paper from 1977, he demonstrates that the reaction producing lactate consumes a pair of free protons, thus retarding acidosis. Uh, this concept was reviewed in the American Journal of Physiology by Rothbergs et al., who again state that lactate production retards and does not cause an acidosis. And the lactic acidosis explanation of metabolic acidosis is not supported by fundamental biochemistry and has no research base of support. Therefore, lactic acidosis is a condition that does not exist. 
We then move to the tissue hypoxia lift. So as we know, there is a very steep oxygen diffusion gradient from the alveolar to the blood to the tissues to the cytosol. One requires a cytosolic PO2 of about 5 millimeters of mercury and a mitochondrial PO2 of about 1 millimeter of mercury to sustain aerobic metabolism. Uh, this was a fascinating study reported in the New England Journal of Medicine where some number of climbers ascended Mount Everest without the use of supplemental oxygen. Uh, they did arterial blood sampling at the balcony, which is 8,400 meters. Uh, they did this by stabbing the femoral artery. Uh, the arterial specimens were then placed on ice, believe it or not, and then the samples were taken down to Camp 2 for uh, analysis. One can see that the mean PaO2 um, at the top of, close to the top of Mount Everest was 24 millimeters of mercury. Um, so by all accounts, most people would, would consider these uh, people profoundly hypoxemic, yet their lactate concentration was not elevated. This is data from exercising skeletal muscle, looking at leg oxygen consumption, intracellular oxygen concentration, lactate efflux, and arterial lactate at various levels of exercise intensity. One can see that level 2 lactate efflux uh, increases significantly, yet muscle intracellular O2 remains constant. So lactate production goes up, yet intracellular O2 uh, does not fall. And we see this with the lactate threshold. So this is often called the anaerobic threshold, which is in fact incorrect. It's the lactate threshold. So at a VO2 of about 60 to 70% of VO2 max, lactate level goes up. But as you can see, it almost parallels the increased concentration of epinephrine. And we'll see how important epinephrine is in driving lactate production. The other concept that is really important is the cell-to-cell -cell lactate shuttle. So lactate is produced by the muscle. This is then uh, transported to the brain, heart and lung where it's used as a fuel uh, and to the liver and kidney where it is metabolized to glucose. So in fact what happens during exercise is myocardial lactate metabolism increases. So uh, lactate is a much more efficient fuel than glucose or fatty acids and the percentage uh, 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 lactate that's used as a source of fuel increases during exercise. So we can see that during exercise the heart increases the uptake of lactate. The same has been found in the brain. So cerebral lactate uptake increases significantly during exercise and recovery. We now move to the anaerobic threshold. So there's this concept that as you decrease oxygen delivery, you reach a critical point at which point oxygen consumption becomes dependent. However, this uh, has been demonstrated to occur at an exceedingly low level of oxygen delivery, 4 moles per kilo per minute, which if one converted that into a cardiac output would be a cardiac output of about 2, or hemoglobin of about four. And sepsis, in fact, doesn't alter this relationship. This was well demonstrated by Ronco, as we can see in this paper in 1993, which he states that sepsis doesn't alter the critical O2 delivery for anaerobic metabolism or tissue extraction ability. Interventions to increase oxygen delivery to supernormal levels in critically ill humans in the hope of increasing oxygen consumption may be inappropriate. So we can see in 1993 uh, these authors have demonstrated that this concept of increasing oxygen delivery to, to increase oxygen consumption was bogus. So how does one explain the increased lactate in sepsis, exercise and other stressful conditions? Uh, this is a review which uh, we wrote in Critical Care. Essentially, what happens is increased levels of epinephrine 
stimulate the beta 2 receptors, increasing cyclic AMP, which increases conversion of glycogen to glucose. At the same time, it drives the sodium potassium pump. This results in increased production of pyruvate at a rate which exceeds that at which it can enter the Krebs cycle. Thus, pyruvate is shunted to lactate. So we can see this is lactate dehydrogenase in which pyruvate is shuttled to lactate. Increased lactate may simply occur due to increased production of pyruvate due to increased glycolysis. Um, this is uh, demonstrated nicely in the study in which asthmatic patients were treated with beta-2 agonists and this resulted in an increase in serum levels of lactate which were related to the plasma albuterol levels. So that beta-2 stimulation increases cyclic AMP, production of a pyruvate, and that results in increased lactate production. There is this notion that lactate is bad. Actually, it's quite good. And uh, evolution doesn't really make any mistakes. As we have seen, as a cell-to-cell -cell lactate shuttle. Brain and cardiac oxidation of lactate increase during exercise and shock. Lactate removal during stress is associated with cardiovascular collapse. Infusion of lactate increases cardiac output in cardiogenic and septic shock. And infusion of lactate improves energy utilization and cognitive function after traumatic brain injury. This is nicely demonstrated in this experimental study by uh, Dr. Uh, Levy. Uh, in which he demonstrates that myocardial lactate deprivation is associated with decreased cardiovascular performance, decreased myocardial energetics, and early death in endotoxemic shock. What they did in this experiment is they gave the selective beta-1 blocker, sorry, beta-2 blocker ICI together with dichloroacetate, which is an activator of pyruvate dehydrogenase. The combination severely uh, impaired myocardial energetics, which were then restored with exogenous lactate. So, in conclusion, almost all clinical in almost all clinical situations, lactate is produced aerobically. Lactate is a major mitochondrial fuel. Lactate is taken up by mitochondria to optimize bioenergetics, and lactate is rapidly utilized in cell-to-cell -cell and intracellular shuttles. Thank you for your attention.